There is no doubt that back in December last year, the final experiment ruffled some serious flat earth feathers. It was wonderful watching the fallout, but I missed something. A documentary made by the Space Busters called Scamtarctica. So I guess that means we're gonna have to debunk the entire thing. Hello all and welcome along to another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, if you remember my debunkings of the Flat Earth documentary level, you'll know that I did so in several parts. And then once all the parts were released, I put together a giant supercut of all the parts together on the channel. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing here. So this today is part one of debunking the documentary Scamtarctica. Let's do this. This is the globe map of the 46 main bases on the alleged continent of Antarctica. The nine bases circled in red in the top left of the Antarctic Peninsula do not have any periods of 24 hours sunlight, and there are many more bases on that peninsula tip, all the same. The globe model says this is because they are too far north of, or just outside of, the circle of latitude that would constantly be facing the sun during the period of September 21st through March 23rd every year at the extreme South Pole, for example, or from as short as only December 10th through January 3rd every year at the outermost or northernmost circle of latitude. Right out the gate, we're dipping into conspiracy buzzwords. Let's be clear, Antarctica isn't alleged. It's very real extensively mapped, home to thousands of scientists every year, and visible on live satellite feeds from multiple sources, not just NASA. And by the way, he's correct when he's talking about those particular bases. They're too far north to see the 24-hour sunlight. Only locations south of the Antarctic Circle experience continuous daylight during the summer months. The closer you get to the South Pole, the longer that period lasts. On that particular peninsula though, you just get extremely long days, but not 24 hour sun. Due to the Earth's alleged 23 degree tilt, keeping those extreme and small southern circles of latitude constantly facing the sun during these months. Obviously, the 37 bases circled in yellow are all inside that latitude ring which is why they have, or at least claim to have, various time periods of 24-hour sunlight every year in these months. Again, this tilt is not alleged, it's measured. Now, our narrator here refers to a small southern latitude circle continuously facing the sun. That's not quite how it works. No part of Earth is constantly facing the sun. It's rotating, remember? But as we've already said, during the southern hemisphere's summer, there are parts in the, within the Antarctic Circle that experience 24 hours of sunlight. And also, they don't claim to have had 24 hours sunlight, they have had 24 hour sunlight. It's documented by researchers, explorers, tourists, and even random YouTubers. You can actually watch time-lapse footage of the sun circling the sky in Antarctica. As my friend Jaren said, who has actually recently been to one of those camps here at Union Glacier Station, and yes, they were there. Despite all of the endless theories and conspiracy theories abound about whether they were really there or not, or whether the apparent 24-hour sun that they witnessed and filmed was real or advanced technological fakery, none of that has anything to do with the hard data and evidence presented in this film. So Space Busters is happy to say that they actually did go to Antarctica, which puts this debate square in the framework of what actually Antarctica is. Makes things much more simple. Whoa. So all will agree there are latitude lines on Earth. 90 degrees at the North Pole, then heading down 66 degrees at the North Circle, maybe 40 degrees at New York, 25 degrees in Miami, and zero at the equator then down 20 degrees in mid-South America, 50 degrees at Punta Arenas, 66 at the Southern Circle, 79 at Union Glacier, and 90 degrees at the South Pole. 
What I realized is that if you move the latitude around the globe, the daylight hours never change. More impressive is that they all, without exception, remember that, match exactly their counterpart. Remember that. So if the daylight hours are 15 hours in New York, then every single place on that latitude all the way around the Earth is the exact same daylight on that day. Unquote. And this is pretty much true from Jaren here. The only difference being is that local sunrise and sunset times will differ slightly because of time zones. For example, Southampton near where I live and Calgary in Canada are on very similar latitudes. On the day of writing this script, they both have around 16 hours, 32 minutes of daylight, but their local sunrise times differ by around 30 minutes. And that's because time zones are messy. They don't always line up perfectly with lines of longitude. Good, I'm glad you get that and agree. Because if we live on a globe, then what you said has to apply to the latitude circles in the Antarctic and South Pole as well. Absolutely. And guess what? It does. That's the point. Every research base located along a particular line of latitude in the south, say 75 degrees south, will get the same amount of daylight on the same day. The sun's arc and daylight duration is dependent on latitude, just like everywhere else on Earth. So one station on the exact same latitude line as any other station there has to have not only the exact same daylight time, but also the exact same length of days for a 24 hour sun. Because as you said, every single place on that latitude all the way around the earth is the exact same daylight on that day. That is mostly true, but I've got one caveat. The visibility of the sun also depends on local conditions. For example, if one base is in a valley surrounded by mountains and the other is in a wide open ice shelf, the sun might dip below the terrain in one location, but not the other, even if both are at the same latitude. Also, due to atmospheric refraction, a station might see the sun for longer than you'd expect geometrically. That's well understood and predictable on the globe. That means one station here cannot be having five extra days of a 24-hour sun daylight, while the exact opposite is not also having the exact same 24-hour sun daylight for those same five days. Actually, it can, and it often does. And that's not a glitch in the globe model. It's a perfectly expected result of how the Earth tilts and rotates. Let's be clear. If two stations are on the exact same latitude, on a flat terrain with the same atmospheric conditions, they will experience the same duration of the 24-hour sun. That is true. But if one station is slightly north or south of the other one, even by a degree or two, the number of days they get 24-hour sunlight will differ. And if that's not only not happening, as Jaren says it has to happen on the globe, for all Antarctic bases on the same exact latitude, either around and across from each other, but that's not even happening either for the bases only 50 to 170 miles away from each other on both the same latitude and even nearly the same longitude, which as you'll see is the case, then Houston, we have a problem. There are no Antarctic research stations on the exact same latitude. Stations are based on statistics and national convenience, not celestial alignment. Even a 0.1 degree difference in latitude matters when it comes to polar sunlight. As my brother Jaron said in his own words, and I love you brother, if you map the earth on a sphere, then every sunrise time and angle is predicted and explained and accounted for for every single location there is on Earth, the entire globe and all places on it, and for every day for the entire year and years into the future, which means in record time since only just over one month ago in Antarctica, Jaren must have double-checked every single location there is on Earth, which even a supercomputer couldn't easily do in a month, if at all, to be sure of this statement, even though only three short sentences later he admits, I will say I came to this realization. It would be impossible, straight-up impossible, 
for them to map every location on Earth and correctly account for sunrise and sunset on any model at all, unless it were the truth. So the sphere Earth is the truth, and no one has ever been able to correctly map this place at all unless they place us on a sphere. Geraint didn't need to check every single location on the globe. That's the point, because the globe model is based on predictable geometry. It works everywhere, all the time. You don't have to manually check each point on the map. You check the math once, and it works for all of them. That's what makes it a model. Geraint gets it right here, when he says it would be impossible to correctly account for sunrise or sunset on any model, unless it were the truth. And the model that does correctly account for all of this is a spherical Earth. Even though Nicole Murphy from Law of the Luminaries and I just explained in under two hours exactly how to easily do that on a Gleason flat map and even design software if your budget and time allowed. Once you understand the seven movements of the apparent sun and moon, their position between the tropics based on the clock and calendar designed to do just that, Mixed with the understanding of the skywheel, the analemma, and the daily 1 degree sun angle altitude shift and 13.22 degree moon angle altitude shift up and down the cone shaped vortex, which can be double checked with a compass and your own two eyes once you study and understand it, which the secret societies and Jesuits who run the world do. What? No flat earth map has ever correctly predicted any of those things. Not sunrises or sunsets or solar eclipses or solar noon or shadow angles or daylight hours across the earth. The Gleason map fails completely when you try and do this, especially in the southern hemisphere. This whole explanation just then boils down to if you believe hard enough, it will work. It throws in real terms like solar analemma and mixes it with invented ones like sky wheels. And then hand waves it all away with, if you study it deeply enough, then you'll get it. And by the way, when your argument relies on blaming ancient religious orders for hiding sunlight geometry, you've officially left science and entered Dan Brown fan fiction territory. The only place it still works visually from the ground but doesn't work trying to computer map base locations is on the alleged globe map of Antarctica, because Antarctica is a giant ice ring on the Gleason map, and the bases would actually be scattered around parts of it. And as you'll see, the globe software clearly doesn't work even remotely accurately on Antarctica either, as Jaron claims. Is he suggesting that globe-based software like timeanddate.com breaks down when you try and apply it to Antarctica? Well, that's nonsense because it doesn't. People at Antarctic bases, scientists, engineers, tourists, they use globe-based tools every day. If the globe model didn't work in Antarctica, none of that would function properly. In fact, it works so well that we can accurately predict exactly when the 24-hour sun will start and end at each base, the exact azimuth and altitude angle of the sun at any time of day, and the number of daylight hours, weeks, or months into the future. I'm admittedly one of the old-school non-supercomputer models, so while I couldn't possibly map every single location on Earth, I was able to do exactly that for every one of these 46 main Antarctic bases on the only two different official websites available. And all I have to say, Jaron, is you keep saying that word accurately. I do not think it means what you think it means, as the overwhelming forthcoming evidence will demonstrate. Well, this should be interesting. Actual data recorded by a fluff. This has definitely piqued my interest. Before that, astute and discerning attentive minds might have already noticed out of curiosity, there were five Antarctic bases of major interest, all in the alleged 24-hour sun zone that I was simply unable to find data for on when and how long that 24-hour sun period lasted at those bases. That doesn't mean the data doesn't exist, so I urge you to go do your own research and see if you can find it. Don't take my word for it. Look for yourselves and let me know. While it proves nothing, 
and I don't want to use it as speculative fluff to add to the other real hard data I have already collected. A refreshing attitude to take here by this flat earther, but it is an odd admission. The 24 hour sunlight period for every base in Antarctica can be calculated precisely using globe based solar models, even if a particular station hasn't published this information. If he genuinely wanted to know, he could have plugged that base coordinates into one of those models, and he would have had his answer in seconds. It is quite curious, out of pattern recognition, that every single one of them just coincidentally happens to be within only 50 to 170 miles away from a listed base with checkable 24-hour sun dates and times. So you and I aren't easily, if at all, able to compare any glaring inconsistencies between those two neighboring bases. Like I said, he could have found that data if he really wanted to. That said, we luckily have a few other close together sets of bases we can cross and double check to see this is all made up bullshit, along with a pile of other hard forthcoming evidence. Again, this is not to troll my friend Jaren. He is honestly asking for an explanation and not name calling, and that's what this film is. Quote, he found evidence today that cannot be explained in my mind. That doesn't mean, Jaron, it can't be explained. That's called Plato's cave, or an either-or logical fallacy. Something that flat earthers do all the time. Explanations cannot be understood. Therefore, they do not believe it. It happens every day. If your mind can only comprehend option A or B, but the reality lies within options C through Z, you have to choose one false reality A or B over another because your mind has not examined the other options C through Z, and your ego cannot simply say, undetermined at this point, I don't know for certain yet, I'm still searching. Wow, yeah, every flat earther ever right there. Playing around with the Andrew Marsh Globe model for the last couple of hours is a great start, but to call that pretty damn conclusive? Now the community needs to check that against other programs and websites to make sure they even match each other, and then have boots on the ground to double check reality versus computer models. Not just playing around on models for a few hours and making blanket statements like the globe predicts every sunrise and sunset of every place and every year. Except when they don't. But all those tools are built on the same maths and physics. Not guesswork. The sun's apparent position in the sky at any time, on any day, from any place on Earth. It's governed by predictable mechanics. Earth's rotation, its axial tilt, and its orbit around the sun. That's why we can model it, and that's why it works. And we've had boots on the ground in Antarctica for decades. Thousands of scientists from dozens of countries live and work there every year. And many of them have documented exactly what the globe model predicts. And this is where we're gonna leave it for part one. In part two, our friend starts looking at the data and that should be very interesting. Well, there we go. What do we all think of the introduction to Scamtartica there? Interesting? Rubbish? Let me know in the comments below as I say we're all done and dusted. Thanks so much for watching today. As ever, it's appreciated. If you enjoyed this one, please do subscribe to the channel and have big thumbs up as well if you really liked it. Part two will be out soon. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.